Cyberif. Hi everybody, just want to speak to you on the topic of is coronavirus aimed at black destruction? And when I say the word or color black, what colors are involved in making black as a color is actually blue, yellow, and red. So this reflects, I would think, most people of color around the world. And if you look at what's happening with the coronavirus, just today there's a headline that says the coronavirus fight. White House health advisor says, Dr. Forshi that is, says we will never get back to normal. And there's also another article from Dr. Forshi saying we're not going back to normal without a vaccine or treatment. And also it's been reported by Dr. Forshi saying there's a higher rate of mortality among African Americans. And also if you do the research on Louisiana, 70% of the death rate or people who have died from coronavirus in Louisiana alone, 70% are African American. Now I'm not suggesting that specifically coronavirus has been created to target a specific group of people, but I just want to stretch your imagination and think about it. Think of the fact that there's an election coming up in the United States of America. Also, if you look at the population around the world and think of Africa and think of Canada and all the countries around the world, Brazil, Cuba, the Caribbean, coronavirus, if it has such a high mortality rate among Afro-Caribbean or Afro-Americans, then this is a worrying trend. It definitely is worrying to me as someone of African-Caribbean descent. And Dr. Forsey warns African-Americans disproportionately are hit or being hit by coronavirus complications due to underlying conditions. And the article says that during a press conference on Tuesday, the task force doctor listed the diseases that are causing disproportional numbers among African American people or communities. And I would say that's going to be around the world because it's the same coronavirus around the world. And it says that Dr. Forsey said, sometimes when you're in the middle of a crisis, like we are now with the coronavirus, it really does shine a bright light on some of the real weaknesses and foibles in our society. We have a difficult problem of exasperation of a health disparity. We have known literally forever that diseases like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and asthma are dis disproportionately afflicting the minority populations, particularly the African American. The doc also reinstated the idea that these complications lead to a bad outcome with the coronavirus. Isn't that interesting? I find it quite alarming that Dr. Forshi would actually list all the, what he calls, quote, diseases such as asthma, diabetes, obesity, and then even try to pin that to any specific group of people. You've got Applebee's and IHOP and McDonald's in Amer throughout America. And it is not just one group of people from a specific ethnic group that goes to IHOP, Applebee's and McDonald's. So to, to now create a stigma, another stigma, another label, 
and pin that to the backs of Afri African Americans or just black people or whatever people you call. Because I don't believe in the word black or white. I don't believe anybody's 100% black and I don't believe that anyone's 100% white. I think that a social stigma that has been pinned to the backs of people to think they're 100% white. If you're 100% white, then grab a sheet of paper from the copy machine and match it 100%. Few people, if any, could ever match the color black. So when people say they're black, that to me is a form of enslavement. And when people say they're white, is also a form of enslavement because you're not white. Most people are actually pink and brown. And like I said, what makes up the color black is actually blue, yellow, and red. And if you think of the red Indians and people who are sunny, tan, yellow-ish, like I said, most people even as are more pink than white. So I'm trying to show you here that, you know, we don't need another label, another stigma. Think of, you know, the issue around the coronavirus and you're having to go for a, an interview or have meetings with people, you know, if, to do business. And if they feel that stigma, another social stigma, another blame upon a specific group of people as afro Caribbean or Africans or Afro-American, whatever you want to call them, that's another label and stigma that we really do not need. We really do not need. In fact, we need to delete a lot of these mythical stigmas. We've got the, the, the Holy Bible written with what people believe is the, the plague of, of Moses upon Pharaoh. When that's really a lot of bullshit to be frank that's been written with narratives to make a specific group of people seem as if they were born for the plagues only there is no such person in the bible as moses in fact the bible from genesis is actually written in africa where do you think the Nile river is imagine any country in the entire world where could that country be of the Garden of Eden? Do you see elephants and zebras running around America? Do you see elephants and zebras running around the UK, England? Do you see them running around Europe? No. To have exotic animals and exotic species and, and think of all the, the climate, environment for fruit trees and the nature and of animals and species in or on the earth it would have to be only in Africa and that's why the Bible of paper versions man-made Bible versions versus what's written on stone of Egypt, Kemet, Nubia, Africa and around the world of the pyramids in Mexico these things prove factually historically archaeologically that the bible is written first on stone before it even hit paper and this is why we've got to be careful how we use terminology and stigma to now place coronavirus on the backs of african americans or africans or people of color and Another article says that coronavirus broke the jobs market. The data hints at a far bigger crisis. Over a billion, a billion people around the world are going to suffer financially as the coronavirus sends the job market into a tailspin. And obviously this will affect low-income families, single mothers, of all nations, tongues, and people, but when you look around the world and look at America and look at Canada and the UK and Europe and Africa and Brazil and Cuba, this is going to have a major, major impact on low-income families. And we know who the majority of low-income families are. These are black, brown, Mexican, Latino, 
Africans of the world, not just any particular country. And this is worrying, and I just wanted to share with you in this video, and I've actually written an article on this, and I'll place the link below for you to read the article, because we're in the early stages of coronavirus, or COVID-19, and it's concerning to me, and I'm sure it's concerning to you, of all nations, tongues, and people. But also, the, it's interesting to see that 20,000 troops are being deployed, and that's across the United States of America. It's, it's troubling in so many different ways to think how families are going to cope, especially single mothers with children, the elderly, the disabled, people on low incomes, people who live in countries that don't have shops and stores locally. This is truly, truly something of a severe magnitude that really and potentially is catastrophic worldwide. What are your thoughts on the coronavirus epidemic or pandemic? How do you feel about the coronavirus even being created by someone or people or a group of people leave your comments below if you're on youtube thank you for listening cyber if